Welcome. Welcome to 2017 Toy Talks. And I'm Yo Azama. I, am, I was the uh, 2012 Act 4 National Language Teacher of the Year. <laughs> I like this cloud already. Okay. Look. Okay. And uh, oops, did I do something wrong? Okay. Hold on. And this is my talk. I'll let you read. Okay. So here I am. I agreed to give this talk six months ago. And have you ever had them, have you ever agreed to something that later you regret, not regret, but you will really be thinking like, oh no, what did I just sign up for, you know? And what do you do when that happens? I got scared. I started running. <laughs> Literally, I just started running into the uh, you know, opposite direction. And actually I accomplished something. I completed three 5Ks <laughs> and two 10K runs, and finally, a half marathon last weekend. <laughs> I know, it's not crazy, crazy, you know, what fear does, does to you, you know, but, uh, you know, some people, you know, say that fear and then stress can bring the best out of you and see how it goes. But the last one, though, you see, me and students, that was special. 20 students of mine uh, joined uh, in the run with me and raised money uh, uh, to support um, uh, homeless youth in Salinas. So we'll get to that later more. But first thing first, we're in Nashville, Music City. So nice to be greeted by Johnny Cash and other music legends when I arrived at the airport. So I couldn't help myself thinking this one question. Huh. If I were to give a music genre for my classes, what would that be? To me, it's easy. It's the 80s pop. <laughs> you know, quirky lyrics and the catchy riffs, people hum and, and fun, uplifting, and that's what my students describe my classes. And fun, his class is fun, engaging, and so forth. But, I knew that my students, after the bell rang for the day, they're going home to a totally different reality. I had a student who told me he's used to not eating. Although his parents both work, two jobs, they still struggle to put food on the table sometimes. I had a student brought me deposit money for a field trip, $15 deposit money all in coins, and that was still $3 short. And you know, her parents couldn't write a check. And also, I remember a kid who was wearing white, you know, earbuds, but not attached to any, any device, trying to fit in. So I examined my instruction, and I had to realize that my instruction is not authentic to their life. So that was a tough moment. That's when I realized that I had to introduce new type of music to my lesson, the blues. Blues deals with human struggles and the raw form of human struggles and human experiences and emotions. As a result, it has a power to connect all of us. So um, my student teacher at that time and I sat down to include this uh, blues into our lessons. And we picked this topic called My Town. My Town traditionally is a unit where students learn about different features of Japan, great food and people are nice, you know, and I felt like I was a spokesperson for Japan Travel Bureau. Okay. Welcome to Japan, Mr. Bond. That was me. And I thought it was great that I could transport my students to Japan for about 55 minutes and show them good time. But again, I knew that those kids are going home to a totally different reality. The reality that doesn't resemble what I've taught that day. So, my student teacher and I sat down. Okay, the fun is good. That's a reality too. But we have to introduce 
challenges and struggles Japan's towns, towns are facing. So we started brainstorming. We came up with uh, many ideas, such as the lack of accessibility for people with uh, disabilities in Japan. And also, we learned that there's a huge aging population in Japan. And result of that, there are many ghost towns happening around the rural area of Japan. And poverty. So poverty, specifically child poverty, is something that we chose as entry, a point of entry to our lesson. It's a really touchy topic, especially to our students. 800 homeless students, uh, uh, there were 800 uh, homeless students in, in Salinas 2007. Now, 10 years later, the number um, 10 times more, 8,000 in Monterey County. So it's a really touchy subject. But it's kind of elephant in the room. No one talks about it, but like it's there. So as we, students and I, explore this really rich topic, we learn so much about it. For example, there's a phenomenon called share house idea. What, the, what it is is that multi-family uh, sharing a uh, dwelling. So many families, different families, start sharing common area in the house um, uh, in Japan. And also, we learned that there's a huge child poverty among single mother homes. I still remember first week when I introduced this data to our students, and students' reaction was like this. Okay, so what? That's, that's how it is. Then I said, yeah, you know what? Come to think of it, I agree. I mean, women are less intelligent, and they, they don't deserve, you know, a much a paycheck than, like, men. It's totally fine. You know, their jaw dropped. I cannot believe you said that. I said, exactly. Exactly. It's wrong. Keep that energy. Keep that anger. Keep that frustration throughout this unit. Let's keep going, shall we? We also learned that children in Japan are helping other children overcoming this issue. And we also learned that one out of five children in the U.S. is living under poverty. And in Japan, do you think it's better? It's one out of six. In the case of Salinas, one out of four. So, and then uh, I asked them third week into this lesson, so you learn about this, all these things. Now it's your job to come up with the solutions to solve this problem, right? It's a big question. Honestly, my expectation was really low. Frankly, I did not have any ideas what I'm talking about. You know, if the, I had no ideas for solutions. And I don't think our society had ideas either. So here I am, I'm asking my third year Japanese, mostly juniors, to come up with the solutions for this problem. 30 minutes later, I found out I was wrong. They came up with wonderful ideas. And one of them I still remember. So one group raised their hand. I think we have solution. Okay, what is it, Braulio? Okay, so we see that single mothers have high rates of child poverty, government should host a speed dating event <laughs> for single mothers. Okay, exactly, that was the reaction, we laughed, right? So I'm like, okay, keep going. Well, hear, hear, hear me out, okay, here's the thing. So they meet potential husbands, double income, come out of poverty, and the kids will have new dads Win, 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 all around win. You know what? Is it a bad idea, really? Yeah, it's not a bad idea. I rather my tax money to be spent on that. It's kind of kind of fun to fun to watch. To, you know, <laughs> if it works, it might work. You never know. So that kind of creative thinking, creative idea, can come from out of box lesson such as this. And so that was that was a, um, like a wake up call for me. And they started having a voice, and naturally they became, you know, they were inspired to do something about it. So guess what? These students organized events, food events. It's called Taste of Japan events. They created rice balls and miso soup, 
and gave out all the um, uh, student body at school during lunchtime. Not a certain group of students, but for all to enjoy it. Because we knew that 75% of our students in the free lunch program, and many of them do not eat lunch for whatever reasons. They don't want to stay in a big a long line, or they don't want to be seen standing in that line, for whatever reason. So we've been doing that every month. And the voice, the student's voice, that's something that really um, I learned from. From this lesson and my students, they helped me remember um, once I was. I was the kid, when I was in the middle school, I was the kid who organized a walkout event to protest the strict uh, hairstyle rule <laughs> that school had. 50 students and I walked out and, you know, to protest because we felt that was a human rights issue. <laughs> I was a teenager and a punk rocker. For me to have a long hair, a funky hair, was a human rights issue. It's very important. <laughs> and that walkout was shut down immediately. But hey, we made a local news a little bit in the newspaper. That was awesome, right? But 30 years later, look at this, what I have, okay? <laughs> and then also, eight years after that, here's my picture. I know, I never reveal myself in 21-year-old Yo Azama. I was going against Gulf Wars happening that time, 1991, when no one else seemed to care, <laughs> my classmates. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> but here's the thing, though. When I became a teacher, my voice started diminishing it. I became more conventional, didn't want to hurt anyone's feelings. I felt uncomfortable not having answers, solutions to complex problems. So what happened to me? You know, it takes courage to show up every day. Even harder to be transparent about it with our students. Isn't it ironic? As a language teacher, we teach language to communicate. But if our students don't develop the voice, if they don't find their voice, how can they communicate to the world in a more authentic way? I'll let you read that. As teachers, the most precious gift we can give to our students is to teach them or help them find their voice. But in order to do that, first we have to start talking about the things that matter to us and matter to our students. Thank you.